welcome to Sarah Stamping Retreat. Today we're going to be looking at different ways to use vellum on our cards and I've got a few interesting ways to show you. And for our card today we're going to be using some really cool new products from Spellbinders. It's their Sealed for Summer collection that's actually released today and there's some beautiful things in it. So we're going to be using the Sealed Blooming Stems dies. You can see it's just a really nice set of dies that you can use to create like a little arrangement. We've got the Glimmer Alphabet Bundle. So here you get a Glimmer Alphabet, which I've not actually seen before. And it comes with the coordinating dies. And this bundle that I'm showing you comes with the stencil to colour in the alphabet as well. And you can buy the set with or without the stencil. And we've got this gorgeous Glimmer Bouquet Hot Foil Play, which you can see is really pretty. And that comes with the coordinating die as well. Then we've got these Essential Modern Oval dies, which I really like because they nest really nicely inside each other. And they're a really nice shape and different to what I've seen for nesting shapes before. And then I'm going to be using two of the gorgeous new embossing folders as well. So I've got this Mandala Blooms embossing folder and then also this Floral and Vine embossing folder. So I'm going to be doing a fair bit of hot foiling today. This is my Glimmer system. And I can tell that it's hot enough because the green light's on. So when you set it up, then it will look like that. And you'll turn it on and this red light will come on and this green light will come on once it's heated up. You'll see that come on in a second because it's already heated up. And there we go, so that's heated up. So I'm going to be using this black foil today. I'm actually going to start off by creating the sentiment for my first card and it's actually an old set I'm going to be using this mini everyday sentiments which I've had ever since I got the glimmer system and it's probably my most used glimmer set because it's got all these different sentiments on it and it has the coordinating dies to cut them out as well so I'm going to be using this happy birthday one today so I'm just going to cut a small piece of the foil and then I'm just going to do it on a scrap of men and mambo cardstock Pop my sentiment on there and then I'm just going to use this yellow tape to hold the whole thing down and then the glimmer needs to be next to the machine so you've got the glimmer plate then the foil then the cardstock and it all just gets flipped over and then I'm going to press this timer and that will flash until it's time to put it through my die cutting machine so you can see that stopped flashing now so that means it's time to take this off so then I'm going to put on the two shims and then I've got my Spellbinders machine. Now I think that the last time that I did this, I did it with my Sizzix machine. And so I used a slightly different setup on my platform, but with the Platinum machine, this works really well for me. So I'm just winding it through and then I'm winding it back again, reasonably slowly, just to give it a bit of time to kind of transfer the foil over. And then we can take these out. And you can see I've got that nice foiled sentiment. And it's nice because it's shiny and it also kind of pushes it into the paper a little bit so you get a little bit of a letterpress type look. So then I'm going to pop this back into the machine so that it can heat up again. And then I can use that coordinating die to cut that out. Then there's my sentiment finished for this card. So then for this card I've got a Melon Mambo card blank. And then I've cut this just a quarter of an inch smaller and I've embossed it with that gorgeous mandala embossing fold. I hope you can see how deep that is and it's really, really beautiful. And so we're going to just glue that onto my card now. And then I've got this piece of black cardstock. It's about an inch wide and I just want to fit that across my card blank. So then I've die cut all these beautiful flowers. So you can see here, I've layered this really pale pink on top of the greeny color. And then here you can see this flower is two layers and those come separately. So you can see from the back, you can cut this whole thing from the green cardstock. This one's Paul Party from Stampin' Up. And then these come as, as separate dies so you can pass it all through at once and so I've just added 
the flowers in the pale pink I've used the same pale pink for both the layers of this one and then I've used the melon mumbo for the center and then this is my first use of the vellum and that is to die cut it because you can see it just has such a beautiful effect it kind of like just softens everything I'm going to make a bit of an arrangement from these and I'm happy with how that's looking so I'm going to glue those to my card And because I wanted to position this a bit further, then the stem's longer than I'd like, so I'm going to just cut that off. And then I'm just going to pop a bit of foam strip behind the sentiment. And then I'm going to pop that across here. Then that's our first card for today. You can see these add a really delicate edge to this card. I really like the mix of kind of like the bold colours in the background and then the soft bouquet. So then for my next card, I'm going to actually pop foil with the vellum. I'm going to use the black again. So I'm going to hot foil directly onto the card front. So for this, I want a piece of foil that is as close to the right size for my hot foil plate as possible. Because you don't want any over foiling. So I'm going to lay this up in the exact same way. So I'm going to make sure this is positioned nicely on the card front. And then I'm going to tape it down. And then again, I've got this heated up. So I'm going to pop this down this way. And I'm going to turn the timer on. So you can see that the vellum's warped a bit from the heat. But when we put it through the die cutting machine, that should sort itself out. There's our beautiful flower. So I'm just going to show you. This is actually the one that I started heat embossing on camera. And you can see it looks okay, but it's a bit broken. It's not a great effect. So you can see how much bolder this one is. So what I did is I put an extra shim in it when I was hot foiling it. So just an extra piece of cardstock to add pressure. And I put it through, so I rolled it forwards and back and forwards and back again to give it extra time to hot foil. I think hot foiling is really a kind of like trial and error process. So if something doesn't work the first time, don't give up on it. You can just try again. You can see here I've been trying out some colouring as well. So originally what I was going to do was just layer this pink cardstock underneath and just have it like that with my sentiment. But I think I do want to add some colour. So that's what I was testing out on here. So I'm going to grab some alcohol markers and colour this in. So those of you that have followed me for a while will know that I mostly use the Altenew alcohol markers on my projects. I do have other markers, but these are my favourites. So for this, I'm going to use this water garden set. And I'm going to use this island garden set. So I'm going to use this hazelnut. Is a kind of yellow on this. I'm going to do some really simple colouring. I'm not going to worry about any shading or anything. I'm just adding colour. And I'm adding it to the back of the flowers. And although you might not be able to see it on camera, when you turn it over, then you don't get the black, but you get the silver at the back, so you still know where to colour. And you can see that's coming through there nicely. And when you colour on vellum, because we're colouring on the back, you always want to choose a, a colour that's darker than you want it. Because once it comes through to the front, it's going to be much paler. Now we've got our coloured image. And I've cut three pieces of this pale pink cardstock. It's his Barely Blush Matte from Paperbox Limited. And I've also got three pieces that are cut just smaller. The pink is an inch smaller than the card front. And then I've cut this sticky just slightly smaller than that um, pink piece. So this is Meader's Touch Sticky Dots. And I'm going to use that today because I've got a bit to use up. But the other thing that you can use for this technique, if you've got that instead, are these Sizzix adhesive sheets. And it's because they're not the same as a lot of adhesive sheets. It's this like really kind of thin layer of glue 
So it's hidden really well because you have to be really careful of what kind of adhesives you use with vellum because otherwise it's going to show through. And obviously because we're going to attach this under here, all the glue is going to show through if we don't use the right adhesive. So by using these sheets, we can make sure that we're kind of hiding our glue. So let's pop that on there. And then you can just see that it leaves this thin layer that you can barely see. And then I'm going to glue that behind here. So you can just see that that kind of brings out that colour and adds something to the front of the card. So then I also want somewhere to write our message. So I'm going to add another piece of this side of the card. And also, because the vellum isn't super sturdy, like it will stand up on its own, but like you can see it's a bit kind of waffy. Then the cardboard added to it really kind of adds a bit of stability as well. So I've got two of these that I'm going to add. I'm going to add the one on the back first because that means I can line it up with this front one. And then I'm going to open it and then I'll add the one inside. And that way I can make sure they're all nicely lined up. And you can see you just can't see that glue at all which is really nice so now you can see they're all nicely lined up you've got this inside that on the back and it also stands up nicely as a card as well so then I've used that same happy birthday sentiment as we used on the last card and I've just created that with the same fairly blush cardstock I want to put that on there and I'm going to pop some foam behind it but I don't want it to go further than this so I'm just going to be careful not to put it just on this end because I don't want it to show through the back of the card. So then there's that card finished. So then for this next card, I'm going to use the alphabet. You can see that the alphabet comes in two plates and then you've got dies that come in two coordinating plates. So I'm going to do the, hot foil those in black. And I'm going to hot foil them onto this blush cardstock. And the reason I'm going to do that is I want this colour to come through to match the card that I'm going to make. And I've not decided whether I'm going to colour it or not yet with the stencil. So I'm going to colour it on this because this is light enough that I can colour that if I decide I want to. And if I decide I don't want to, then I've got the right colour underneath. So I'm going to fit both of those onto there like this. So now we've got our alphabet, you can see it's not the one that we started with. This is the one we started with and it underfoiled in the middle. So I put it back through with an extra piece of cardstock in the sandwich. You can see now it's overfoiled a bit, but I'd prefer it to be overfoiled than underfoiled for these letters. Because we're going to die cut them anyway, so it doesn't actually matter. And then I'm going to place this over here. And you can see... They've given us these really handy guides as to where to line up our die. So if you line it up within these guides, then you know you're going to have it in the right place. If you're going to use the stencil, you would stencil at this point. So if you were going to stencil, then you would line this up like this. You could quickly add all the ink and it's a really quick job. But I'm not going to use that just now. So then I can pop it through my die cutting machine like that. So now we've got all these letters. You can see they're really pretty with the black foil outline and the pink in the middle. So then I'm going to use this firm vine embossing folder and I'm going to ink it up with black ink. So I'm going to use my brayer to do that. And then I'm going to run that over. I'm running it over the flatter side, the bit where um, the pattern goes in as opposed to out. And I'm using the brayer because it's easier to help it not go down all those gaps. So then I'm going to put some of the pink cardstock, the barely blush that we've been using, onto this side and make sure that's nicely lined up. 
Then I'm going to flip this down and then I'm going to put it through my machine. And then we can open this up to see this really gorgeous pattern. So you've, the black has turned to grey in the background because obviously we spread it quite thinly with that brayer. And then those flowers really pop now. So I'm just going to cut that down to fit my card. So then I've filled and die cut this happy from here. That's a, the Be Bold Glimmer Sentiment set. And again, this is a really old one that I get out time and time again. I do believe you could still buy it. And then I'm going to use my vellum on this one in the simplest way I'll show you today, but also the way that I use most. I often use it as a banner or a panel to put across your card. When you've got quite a busy background, it takes away a bit of that busyness and helps your sentiment stand out if you pop it on a vellum panel. So I'm just going to spell out birthday with the letters that we foiled. I'm using my grid mat underneath to line them up and actually I'm even going to go as far as to tape the vellum to my grid mat so that it doesn't slip around because I want them to be nicely lined up. I'm going to glue that happy above it. Okay so then I can layer up my card so I've got an A6 pale pink card blank and then I've got a piece of black cardstock that is a quarter of an inch smaller than it. Then I cut our embossed piece to an eighth of an inch smaller than the black piece. And then I've got some of those same sticky dots we were using earlier, the needs to touch ones, just to add to the back of our vellum panel so that again it's sticky but the sticky won't show through. And again, we could use those that Sizzix adhesive sheet in this case as well. So that's our panel on and then I'm just going to add some of the black enamel dots from these old new black and white ones. So there's that card done. So then the next way that I'm going to use our vellum is to create a shaker card. So I've used those gorgeous modern oval dies to cut this piece of vellum which I've obviously foiled with that flower that we used before. And I've also used two of the ovals next to each other to create a frame for this. So I'm going to glue that onto there. And the frame does two jobs. It looks pretty and it also is going to hide our shaker frame. Then I'm going to turn that over and I'm going to add some fine strips. Now these fine strips are quite thin so I'm going to double them up because I want to put like some gems in here. I would use it just the one layer if I was just putting something flat like sequins or something in. I want to put some gems in so I'm going to double it up. And then I'm going to lay that behind that black frame and I'm laying that really carefully along there. So I don't want to be able to see the frame. And then I'm going to butt this right up against the um, previous one because I don't want anything to fall out in the shaker. And I'm going to continue going round. So then I've got this rainbow sparkle mix from um, Little Things from Lucy's Cards. And I've chosen this one because it's really bright. Because you want something that you're going to see through the um, vellum. And I'm going to put in more than I usually would as well because you want to be able to see it. So then I'm going to take the backing off this. And I'm going to pop that on my card. And you'll see that you can see that kind of rainbow behind there now which gives that a really lovely subtle effect. And then I'm just going to finish it by adding on this happy birthday. Then you can see how cute that card is. I just wanted to show you as well, going back to the letters we used on the last card, these are some that I made that are in gold foil and I've just coloured the letters in pink. So I just wanted to show you that as a different look for those letters. 
And then for my final card, this is the last way we're going to use our vellum today, is to emboss it. And you can see how beautiful that looks because where the vellum's been embossed, it goes white and it looks really beautiful. So I'm going to cut that down and use it for this card. So you can see where this is embossed really strongly. When I've cut it, some of the little bits have kind of like fallen out. That's not a problem. I'm just going to stick them onto the card. So usually I would stick this on the back of here, but because I want to stick those extra bits on, I'm going to actually stick it onto the front of the card. And then I'm just going to pop this in. So then I've cut some of these Martin ovals, one from the light pink and one from the dark pink that we've been using. And I'm just going to glue those together. And then I'm going to glue them to the front of my card. And you can see how pretty this looks in the background. It's almost a bit like lace. So then I've got some of these pieces from the die set. And you can see I've just done the same as before where I've just laid them up. So I'm going to just glue those on the front. And I really love layering dies like this. She gets such a lovely effect with the different colours. And these two stems are a bit longer than the others because I've put them a bit further down. So I'm just going to cut the ends off those. And then I've got this happy birthday that I'm going to pop across like that. And so then there's that one done. So then now all of today's cards. I really hope that you like them and it's given you some ideas for how to use vellum on your cards. Let me know in the comments below which one is your favourite. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd really appreciate you clicking like below. And you can also press subscribe if you'd like to see future videos. If you press the bell button and select all, then YouTube will also notify you when I've got a new video available. All of the products that I've used for today's cards are listed in the description below. And there's also a link there to my blog where you can find a picture supply list if that helps you find what you're looking for. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you again soon.